Hallelujah. When he's in the room, I couldn't get away from it. When he speaks, when he moves, he's changing everything. Do you need him to change some things in your heart this night? Do you need the Lord to change you? Hallelujah. I know I need the Lord to change me. Every day I need him to change me. And he's changing us more and more into his image. He's changing us more and more into his son, Jesus Christ. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day we're going to stand in glory and we'll be forever whole. Hallelujah. We'll be forever changed. Hallelujah. If you turn in your Bibles with me tonight, I'm going to be uh, talking about Mary. It's in the book of Luke in chapter 1. And I've never spoke on Mary before. Um, Mary, Jesus' mother. But uh, um, I'm singing the song, Mary, Did You Know, for the Christmas thing that we're doing on the 19th. And I've been just thinking about Mary, you know, because the Catholic Church, how they see Mary is, you know, they worship her. And as I was singing the song and I was practicing, I said, Lord, you know, it, the song is called Mary, Did You Know? But it's not really about Mary. It's pointing out, Mary, did you know Jesus Christ? Did you know what this baby that you were given the privilege and the honor to bring forth, did you know what he was going to do? And I believe she did know. I believe Mary had a great understanding of it, more than we could ever imagine. Mary knew her assignment. She understood her assignment. Mary knew what God was calling her to do. And it's, it's, it's incredible how the Catholic Church or this world has changed her assignment and made it about her. But Mary knew it was about the baby boy Jesus. And she believed that with all her heart. And if you would go with me in chapter 1, in Luke chapter 1, Starting, I'm going to start in verse 28. Verse 28. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. I'm not even going to lie. I was like, Lord, what am I going to speak? I was all over the place trying to get something. So y'all just bear with me tonight. Amen. Amen. Y'all here? Yeah. You're here? Okay. All right. So in um, Luke chapter 1 and verse 28, it says, The angel came. And unto her and said, Hell, you you that are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Blessed is you among women. Verse 29, it says, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And, and verse 30, it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary, then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also the holy things which shall shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called, sorry, yeah, who was called, okay, I'm sorry, verse 37, for God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, my handmaid of the Lord, be to be it unto you, be it unto me according to your words. And the angel departed from her. And I just want to look at verse uh, 45 real quick. Luke 1, 45, and it says, And blessed is she who believed, for there shall be promise of those things which were told her from the Lord. Blessed is she who believed. I'm just going to pray real quick. Lord, I need you. God, I need your mercy. I need your grace, God, every hour, every moment. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, that you would anoint me now. God, that you would send your Holy Spirit, God, to give me the words, God, 
to encourage your body, to encourage your people. God, I'm asking, Lord, that you would have your way, Father. And God, this word would bless someone tonight. It would bless your people's heart, God. Be glorified and be exalted. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if I had to give a title tonight, it was going to be, Blessed are they who believe. Blessed are they who believe. And as I was reading that, first of all, Mary, she, uh, the angel comes to Mary, and he tells her, you are highly favored in verse 28. And we can put that up there. Verse 28, the angel says to Mary, he says, hell, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And Mary's name actually it came from Mara. And it, it, when I looked it up, it said it can be bitter. It said, um, or it said it can be beloved. I'm not sure. But uh, exactly in this particular moment, the Lord was blessing her despite her name, despite anything. And I also love that she says, um, further in the story, Mary calls herself a maiden. She says, I'm, I'm low, I'm a low maiden, and she calls herself blessed because the Lord has looked upon her to give her favor. But right here in verse 28, he, the angel says to her, you are highly favored. And when I looked at that word, highly favored, it says a special honor. And, it's, and also, when it said hell, it says to be cheered or well or happy. And uh, to be highly favored, for an angel, if an angel came down and spoke to me right now and said, Nah, you are highly favored, I would have a hard time believing that. If I looked at my life, if I looked at some of my things in my life that I might be dealing with or struggling with, but the angel, nevertheless, he declared her as highly favored. And I think the, and at the bottom it says, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. That's why we're blessed. If you don't feel like you're blessed, if you don't feel maybe like in your life everything's going the way you want it to go, or maybe the way you thought it was going to go, you're looking at it wrong. Your blessing is not in what you have. Your blessing is not in what you're doing. Your blessing is what? That God is with you. The so angel said to her, he said, you are blessed. Why? Because the Lord is with you. And I mean, this might be a simple truth to some of you guys tonight, but I'm going to be, I'm going to remind you. Paul said, I don't find myself tedious in reminding the church. And I'm reminding you tonight that you're blessed. Say to your neighbor, say, I am blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, say, I am blessed. I'm blessed. Because the Lord is with me. Man, okay, look, we're going to try that again. I'm going to try If I say, who wants $10,000 right now? Whoever said it the quickest, y'all like, me, right? So let's try that again. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Because the Lord is with me. Because the Lord is with me. There's power in that. Child of God, tonight, there's power in that decree over your life. I am blessed because the Lord is with me. We forget who is walking beside us. He's with you. And the angel told her this. He declared that. He said, you are blessed because the Lord is with you. And in verse, uh, the next verse 29, it says, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Anybody know what that word salutation is? Greeting. Greeting. I didn't know that until I started reading this. When they were saying salutation, I was like, what is that word? I like that salutation. <laughs> it just sounded very fancy to me. But it was the greeting. The way he greeted her brought her to a place of being troubled. And I love this. It says, when she saw him, she was troubled by his sayings. When she saw him, when God begins to reveal himself to you, when he begins to re reveal things to us in our lives and maybe how he want, what he wants us to do, what the calling may be upon your life, what he's calling you to do, when God begins to reveal that, sometimes we get troubled. When God begins to tell you, look, I need you to do this. I'm calling you to this place. I'm calling you to a deeper place with me. I'm calling you to a place of knowing me. I'm calling you to whatever it is. And I, I want to change this in your heart. I want to do, I want to, I want to move this in your heart. I want to do this. A lot of times we begin to get troubled in our hearts. And Mary, she was troubled. She was troubled. I know as I begin to look at the Lord, a lot of times, sometimes I look back at myself. I see his holiness and then I see myself. I see all that the Lord is and then I see myself. And if, if someone else came to you, you know, the angel was giving her great compliments. If I started complimenting Sherry and I'm giving her great compliments, a lot of times in the natural we can receive it. We're like, oh yeah, thanks. 
And we're like, yeah, pat me on the back. Yeah, this is great. But when the Lord begins to speak these truths over our lives, we doubt it. Why? Because Sherry can't see all my flaws and my failures. But God can see all my flaws and my failures, and he can see my struggles. And so, so many times when he begins to speak truth and say, listen, you are blessed, you are highly favored, you tend to not believe it. Because of all, of all who he is and how awesome and great and mighty he is, we doubt what he's calling or what he's declaring that we will be as he begins to change us. We're like, it's impossible, Lord. So she started to doubt what the Lord was saying to her. He was saying, you are highly favored. You are blessed among, among all women. You are, you, are a, you are a special honor. She doubted it as she began to see him. And I just want to encourage you tonight that don't get discouraged that you will be blessed you're blessed because of the Lord, but not only that, do not, despite what you see in yourself, despite of how you may feel, you are still highly favored. You are still the child of God. You are still who he has called you to be. So I want to encourage you tonight to look back to the Lord. Get your eyes off of yourself. Get your eyes off of your failures. And I want you to look back to Jesus Christ. I want you to look back into what he's accomplished for you on the cross. And she began to be troubled. When she saw him, she was troubled. As Jesus' light began, as we get closer to the Lord, the light of God begins to shine brighter on us. As you get closer and closer to that object, if you have a flashlight, and as I got closer and closer to the object, it begins to, uh, to show everything on it. They have these mirrors now. I think you women would know what I'm talking about. Uh, we would, there's mirrors that... Um, one side, you can see a face far away, right? But then when you flip it, it has that little round circle around it, and then it's like super close on your pores, and you can see like every black head, every blemish, every mark, and you're like, oh my goodness. And you'll be thinking you're looking good, and then you flip the mirror around, and you're like, why didn't nobody tell me about that hair I had there, or whatever, you know? And so, but as you seek the Lord, and as you draw near to him, and he draws an eye to you, it reveals more and more of those ugly pores, if I can say that. And so many times when we see those ugly pores or we see those things that God wants to deal with, we tend to run the other direction. But she was afraid and she was troubled. And the angel said to her, this is in verse 30, the angel said to her, he said, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Oh, and in verse 29, it said that the casting of her mind and uh, what, of what manner of salutation this shall be. When I looked at that word, the casting of her mind, it meant to keep thinking about it. She just was uh, constantly thinking about it. She was troubled, and she it, and when I looked at the word trouble, it said to be um to be distraught wholly. Like her whole, her whole body was just like, all of it was just a mess. Have you ever been in that position when you're in a circumstance or situation? Like your whole world is just turned upside down. Mm. But not only that, her mind was busy. Her mind was casting her mind all over. It was um, it was it was a uh, thinking about the problem, thinking about the dispute, thinking about it constantly. Have you ever been in a place where there was no peace in your mind? In your mind, maybe at work someone said something to you and they didn't even know they offended you. They didn't even know they hurt your feelings. Or maybe your husband said something to you, or your wife said something, or your boss said something, and that thing just gnaws at you all day, and you're just replaying it and replaying it over and over and over again. And as the Lord Holy Spirit was speaking to her, she's replaying this thing in her mind, and she's trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. Sometimes, look, things are going to happen. You might know the an not, might not know the answer, but you know the God that has in control of everything. You know the God that's in control of everything. And so her mind's just running, and the angel can see the fear on her. And he said, do not fear, Mary, for you found favor with God. You have found favor with God. Why? Because you believe. I read that last verse. It said, it said and she was blessed because she believed. You found favor with God, not in what you have done, not in what you do, but in what you believe. And you have found favor with him tonight because you are here. You're believing. You're believing God to change. You're believing God to show up where you need him to show up. You're believing God to move on those things in your life. And, he, and the angel said to her, do not fear. Do not fear. You found favor with God. 
In verse 31, it said, Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. When the Lord speaks these things to your life, when he's speaking these things in your life, and he's declaring that, hey, you are highly favored. Hey, there's blessings because I'm with you. Hey, I have a call on your life. I have a plan for your life. You're not alone. And he speaks these things over us, and we begin to fear because we don't know how it's going to happen. There's blessings and promises that God has spoken maybe to every single one of you guys. It may be different from the blessings that he spoke to my heart, but God has spoken a promise to you. And maybe you even wrote it down years ago. I don't know. Maybe he spoke it to you last week, but he is speaking things to you constantly. If you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, he is speaking to you constantly. That I'm going to change you. That I'm going to do a new thing. That I'm going to cause life to come forth. And he speaks those things in your heart. And right here it says, behold, you shall conceive in your womb. That word conceive, when I looked it up. When I looked up conceive, it said it was like a class. It said it was, um, and I, when I thought about class, I thought like of a, a bracelet or a necklace. If you had a class and you would, you would attach it so it wouldn't come loose so you wouldn't lose it. And um, it was a, something that was valuable. You know, when I was younger, my dad, would, he would buy me jewelry. And um, I, I'm so bad with jewelry. I lose, like, oh my goodness, I lose all my jewelry. I'm the worst. I'll get something, I'll just wear the same thing over and over because if I don't, I'll lose it. And I just, I'm not good with it, all right? So if I ever got married, I'm gonna have to like glue it to my finger because I'm so bad with jewelry. And so my dad, he would buy me these expensive necklaces and I would lose them, like diamonds and, and expensive bracelets, and I would lose them. And he would just, he's like, I don't know what to do with you anymore. And I was like, I know, I like them, I'm grateful, but I don't know why I lose them. And so finally, he was so happy one Christmas, he got me a bracelet, and I don't know if you ever seen those before, but they have these, they have this lock where you lock it on both sides. You know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like a wing, and it clicks on both sides. And he's like, you're not gonna lose this. This is not going anywhere, but I did lose it. Um, <laughs> and I was so sad, but he was so determined for me not to lose this precious gift that he was giving me. He just wanted to give me this precious gift, and he wanted to, to lock on and not be lost. And the Lord, just like that word class for conceive, the Lord, the holy the angels, angel was saying to her, you are going to conceive this. See, what the Lord speaks into your life, what the Lord declares over you, you are going to conceive it. He is planting a seed in you, and he wants you to hold on to that. He wants us to hold on to those promises, hold on to those things that he's promised you. And he's saying, hold on to it like a class. And he said, seize it. Take hold of it. Let the word of God that he speaks to you daily, let your heart, let it lay hold of it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't, don't let it fall to the wayside because he's planting seeds and he's conceiving something into you that is so precious, that is so great, that is so awesome that no one can understand it but God. But God, he has these things in our lives and he's producing it and he's planting these seeds. So he's conceiving these things into our lives and he said he was going to be in your womb. He said he's going to conceive and the verse said... It said, you shall conceive in your womb, in that deep inner part, that deep, deep inner part that no one else sees, it's going to cause life to come forth. In that dark, dark, dark place where nobody is allowed, the Lord said, I'm going to plant a seed there and it's going to bring forth life. I don't know what's in your womb. I don't know what's the deep part of your womb. I don't know what's going on in your deep inner part of your heart that no one knows, but you know what I'm talking about tonight. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I want to conceive a seed in that, and I want it to grab a hold of it, and I want it to bring forth life. Don't let that seed fall to the wayside. Don't let it fall to the wayside. And not only will he said, I'm going to conceive it in your womb, but then he said, and it will bring forth a son. That word bring forth, when I was looking it up, it said that it's going to come to pass, that it's going to come to pass. You know, everything that you go through in your life, every trouble, every trial that you go through in your life, the Lord, if you allow him, if you allow the Holy Spirit to plant that seed 
and let it take root and let it to begin to grow and bring forth life, he will bring it to pass. He's going to bring it forth. He's going to make it happen. What God wants to do in our hearts and our lives, he wants to bring forth Jesus. This whole thing is not to bring forth hurt and pain. Does that happen in the process of it? Yeah. The Lord's never said it was going to be easy, but he said you that he will be there through the trials. He said that he will be your strength. He will give you grace and there will be blessings. But we live in a fallen world. There's no way to go without getting hurt. There's no way to go without having struggles. But he did promise that if you allow the Holy Spirit to conceive in you, I will bring forth my son. He wants to change us more and more to the image of Christ. Whether it's unforgiveness, if we allow the Holy Spirit to plant that seed, uh, to set us free of that unforgiveness and that bitterness, if we allow him to plant the seed, he will bring forth life and cause you to be set free and no longer bound in anger, but yet set free of the spirit of uh, anger and bitterness. He will bring forth life. He will bring forth life, and his name shall be called Jesus. Let's jump down to verse 34. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? After God reveals things to you in your life, re reveal things to you in your marriages, reveal things to you at your job, say, hey, I want to change this. Hey, I want to bring forth life here. Hey, I'm calling you to this purpose. I'm giving you a direction. I'm leading you. Right away, we begin to doubt it. She said, how can this be? We start to look in the natural. She said, I, I haven't been with a man. How can this be, Lord? We go to our natural resources. I don't have it. I cannot do it. How can this come to pass? Lord, I know you're telling me that you want to deliver me from this drug. Lord, I know that you're telling me you want to deliver me from this bad character. Lord, I know you're telling me that you want to change my marriage. But how can this be, Lord? How can this be? You're calling, you're telling me that I'm favored. You're call, You're telling me that I'm chosen. How can this be? And you're telling me you're going to conceive it and you're going to produce Christ out of me. But how, Lord? I know my struggles. I know my own strength. I know that I am not able because I've tried many of times and fallen. That's why Paul said, I do the things that I don't want to do and the things that I want to do, I can't do. So Mary said, Lord, how is this going to happen? It sounds wonderful. But how are you going to produce this thing in my life to come forth? I don't know a man. And right away we begin to look at ourselves. But can I tell you, even, she said I didn't know a man. She was talking about in a natural, like I've never slept with a man. How am I going to have a baby? But no man, no man, no woman in your life can produce the things in your heart that God wants to produce but Jesus. Amen. No man, I'm going to say that again, no woman can produce the thing that God wants to do and to deliver you in your heart but Jesus Christ. So she was talking about a natural. She was saying it even, she didn't even know what she was saying. She's like, Lord, there's, there's no man. You're right, Mary. There is not a man. There's not a man at all in this entire world that can produce Jesus. If she would have slept with her husband, that wouldn't have produced Jesus. It would have been another son. It would have been one of the kids they had after Jesus. But it wasn't going to produce Jesus Christ. Right. And can I remind you tonight? I don't care what act, religious act that you do. I don't care what kindness that you do. I don't care how much Bible you read. I don't care how much you fast. None of that is going to produce Christ to come out of you. That's right. You can know the Bible from back to front. You can pray on your knees 24-7. But that will not produce Jesus to come forth out of your life. Right. You can go to every drug meeting there is in this whole town if you're trying to get off drugs. You can do everything. You can try to do all the accountability. Whatever you think you can do, you can jump through every hoop there is. You can go through every AA meeting. I don't care what it is, but I'm telling you, it will not produce life in you. That's right. It will not produce it. You can struggle whatever sin that you're struggling with. You can fight that thing all day long, but it's not until you surrender and say, Jesus, you're the man that can produce this. You're the man that can make me break forth Jesus Christ. You're the one that can change me. And the angel answered and said unto her, this is what he said. 
The Holy Spirit shall come upon you. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you. You need the power of the Holy Ghost yes. to live this life out that Jesus Christ has called you to live. Yep. You need the power of God to overcome whatever it is the devil comes and brings to you every night, every morning, every time you're struggling. You need the power of God to grab a hold of you and to change you. But you have to be willing to say, Lord, you conceive it. Lord, you do it. I'm trusting and believing in you. Blessed is she who believes. Blessed is the man that believes in God. The angel said, basically he was telling her, you're right, there isn't a man. He said, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. The only way that you're going to be able to have this thing birthed out of you in your life, in your marriage, in your walk with the Lord is only by the power of the Holy Ghost and what and believing in what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross. I don't think you're getting it tonight. I don't think you're getting it. I think it's going in one ear and out the other. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Have you allowed the Holy Spirit to overshadow you throughout your day? Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to overshadow us when we find ourselves in situation, or are we running away from the shadow of the Holy Ghost and we're getting under another shadow, another dark spirit? See, because whatever we conceive will be birth. What are you conceiving in your life? What are you allowing to come and plant seeds into your womb, and what is it producing? Right. That's the question. What not to myself, Naya? What are you allowing to conceive into your heart and into your mind, and what is it producing? What is it birthing out of you? And if it's not because of the shadow of the power of the Holy Ghost and me coming under the authority of Jesus Christ and surrendering my life, then I'm going to only come under the shadow of the darkness of this world. And I'm only going to proceed, I'm only going to conceive what the world is giving me. And I'm going to produce what? Death. Because yes. mm -hmm. sin produces death, right? The wages of sin is death. But the Holy Ghost is saying tonight, you do not have to go in that direction. You can go God's way. If you believe, you shall be blessed. And if you're not believing, guess what? God is so merciful. One moment to say, Lord, here I am. Help my unbelief. I believe, God, that all that you have made available for me on the cross, all that you said I can have, I'm reaching out and I'm grabbing it. And I'm saying, Lord, come conceive into my heart. Come conceive into my womb, Lord. And you produce this life. Because I can't do it. We can't do it. I'm telling you, don't deceive yourself tonight. You cannot overcome. That's right. We cannot be the, all that the Lord desires us to be in our own strength. It has to be not by no man. Not by you, not by your mama, not by your wife, not by your boss, not by your children, not by your bank account. My Lord. Good. It's only by what the angel said. And he said, the Holy Spirit come upon you. Will you allow him to come upon you? He wants to. Man, he wants to be involved in every direction, every decision of our life. He wants to. He wants to. And the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. He said we should be under the shadow of the mighty of his wings, right? right. Under the shadow of his wings. Therefore, the holy thing which shall be born shall be called the Son of God. The thing that Jesus Christ is wanting you to birth in your life is more of Jesus. He wants you to just birth more of Jesus. And I love this. It goes down to this. It said, uh, in verse 36, it says, Behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived. See, Elizabeth has also conceived because Elizabeth has also come in under the shadow of the Holy Ghost and has allowed the Lord to birth forth life. 
See, you're not alone. What God is calling you to do in your life, you're not the first one to go there. I'm not the first one that the Lord is saying, Naya, I want to deal with this in your heart, and I want to set you free, and I want to bring deliverance. We're not the only, you're not the first. There's been millions and millions of people before you, and the Holy Spirit revealed. Sometimes when we're in our trials, we think, I'm the only one going through this. I'm the only one trying to live for the Lord. I'm the only one wanting to do right. I'm the only one. But the Lord reminded me, he said, look, your cousin Elizabeth is conceiving as well. She's allowing the Holy Spirit, the seed of the word of God, to take hold of her heart and to produce life. She was of an old age. She was not able to do it in the natural man, but she was willing and a servant to say, Lord, I'm your servant. Do what you want to do in my life. And because she was willing and, and um, gave her life to the Lord and said, have your way, he was able to conceive in her and bring, bore, bring forth the son, the baby John, John the Baptist, who did amazing things for the kingdom of God. But I have to ask you tonight, what is it that God is wanting to birth in you? Not your, not your, not your wife, not your, not your friend across the way. Ask yourself that. Lord, what is it that you want to birth in me tonight? Because it's personal. But even though it's personal, the Lord still used Elizabeth to encourage Mary. She said, he said, your cousin as well, your cousin has conceived even in her old age. She's six months, six months pregnant, right? And in verse 20, uh, 37, it says, with God, nothing is impossible. That's right. Church, with God, nothing is impossible. That's right. Yeah. Nothing is impossible. You might be dealing with something that you think is impossible for you to get set free with. You might be struggling with something that you're like, this is impossible. I'm never going to get the victory. I'm never going to be able to walk away from this thing. I'm never going to be delivered. But the Lord is saying, with me, it's impossible. Now, it's not impossible, Naya. The Lord is saying with you tonight, with him, it's not impossible. With him, it's not impossible. Blessed is the man who believes. Do you believe it tonight? Amen. Nothing with God is impossible. And Mary said, behold, your handmaid, the Lord. And, he, and, and she said, be unto me according to your word. She was saying, Lord, I'm your servant. I'm your handmaid. Be unto me. All that you said is going to happen, Lord, let it be. Let it be so. Let it be so. She was coming to a place of surrender after she heard all that he spoke. As the fear came up, as the, the place of her being troubled. You know, we go on roller coasters with the Lord. You know, one minute we're on the mountaintop, next minute we're in the valley. We, we go, I don't know about y'all, but okay, I'll say to me, I'm on a roller coaster with the Lord. So she went from excited one moment to seeing the Lord, the Lord telling her she's favored, to the next moment being afraid, to the next moment being troubled, to the next moment trying to figure it out, to the next moment. And, and now she finds herself in a place of surrender. She's like, Lord, let it be so. <clears throat> All that you've spoken, Lord, let it happen to me. <clears throat> be unto me according to your word. And that's where the Holy Spirit is wanting us to get to tonight. He's wanting us to get to a place that says, Lord, be unto me according to your word. Everything that you've spoken. There's things that he has spoken in our lives. There is. I know it is. I don't know everybody's testimony, but you know, I know the Lord is speaking things to you. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops moving. He never stops calling us to a deeper place with him. He never stops calling us to change more and more into his image. And if you think you already have arrived, then man, that's scary. Because he's not done with us. This is going to be into glory. But you have to ask yourself, what am I allowing to conceive into my heart? And what is being brought forth? What is being birthed in your life? What is being birthed in your life? Let's stand. You can come. What is being birthed in your life? What are we allowing to conceive in our hearts? What are we allowing to... to uh, concede and take root and grab a hold of what is that thing? Let's stand if we can stand. Hallelujah. 
you know, when I was doing this, I, I never seen it like that before. I never seen how, you know, I would always just see like, wow, Mary was a virgin and she, the Lord gave her Jesus and she gave birth, but the Lord just was revealing that to me. And I, this is for you. I want to conceive into your life and I want to plant a seed and I want to bring forth Jesus out of your life. And the word of God says, blessed is he who believes. It doesn't say blessed is he who goes and does it. It doesn't say blessed is he who goes and makes it happen and finds a man to make it happen. But no, it was only going to be by one way. By the Holy Spirit coming upon you. And I don't know, maybe you're not filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. Maybe you, you've never given the Lord the opportunity to allow his Holy Spirit to hover over you and to be a part of your life. Maybe, maybe you've never stepped out and taken that step of faith and saying, Lord, I want the Holy Spirit I want the Holy Spirit to, to fill me up, to renew me, and the power of the Holy Ghost. When we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in, but there's a second act. The Holy Spirit comes upon us, and he fills us with utterance of speaking in tongues, and he fills us up for the power and the servitude to glorify him. Because you need power. See, she was working, she was, she was going for it, and she was going to do a job for the Lord. She was going to do an act for the Lord, for the kingdom of God. It was for the kingdom of God to bring Jesus into this world, that all might come to him, that all might not perish, but have everlasting life, if they believe. So she needed the power of God to walk this thing out. Do you need the power of God to walk whatever it is that he's speaking yes. to you tonight? To walk it out. Do you need that power? Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we need the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus. If that's you tonight, I just, I encourage you. This is a life-changing moment. That you have walked in the house of God. And you said, Lord, I need your power to live for you. Lord, I need your power to walk this thing out. God, that I might get, that I might give birth to Jesus Christ. That I might bring forth Jesus Christ in my life. Because everything that I'm consuming, everything that's conceiving in my life is not bringing forth life. So, Lord, I need a touch. And if that's you tonight, these altars are open. Just come, we'll pray with you. These altars are open. If you need a second dose of the Holy Ghost tonight, if you need a refreshing, a renewing of the Holy Ghost, if you need power tonight, it's here. It's here. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here. And he's moving in this room. Hallelujah. He's moving in this place. Whatever it is, if you need to get away from a drug, if you need to get away from a sin, I, I promise you tonight, if you take that step of faith, you will never leave this room the same. You will be changed. You will be changed. You will be changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to sing. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Send in your presence. Broken for you with my heart's desire to love and adore you.